I met the kid AZ. Produced by contracts, okay. production, This is when I met AZ. I went up to him. I found out who he was, and I stepped to him because I heard he was the young cat up there getting it. So I went up stepping to him and talking to him like, yo, this is who I am. Because like I said, I, like I told you earlier, I didn't have no problem That's right. with, with, with asking people for, for some work and, you know, putting me, that, putting me down. Right. I went up stepping to him. He's like, yo, come see me. I heard about you. You know, so I said, all right. And this is when he had 145th Street. All right. In St. I'm mean, 145th Street, 7th and 8th, the jukebox. You know, and AZ was young, and AZ was getting it. He, he was getting it. He was the young kid busting out with the Audis, and this is when they had the Audi. This is when the Audi 4000s was popular. So he wound up. He wound up. You know, I didn't see him no more. I was waiting for him to get back to me. So I was still doing my thing. I was eating. You know, I was. Yeah, I wound up uh, stepping the A at that time. I remember it was on 139th Street in uh, Southern Avenue over there by the Wendy's. They used to have the games on Lenox Avenue. So. That's right. uh, I went there, I asked him this and that, and I knew what he was into, and I told him, I said, yo, I'm on the east side, because I started hustling around my mother's way again, too, so I said, yo, I'm on the east side, can you Produced give me some bottles? Contracts, and, you know, because I knew he was into the bottles for $10 and all that. I said, okay. yo, can you give me some bottles? All right. This was the powder thing, no powder. crack. This was the powder thing. So he was, he was kind of reluctant at first, he didn't really, but he told me to get back with him. So, you know, you tell me that, I'm going to get back with you. So uh, I got back with him, one thing led to another. I wound up getting bottles from him, and he wound up hitting me. Okay. He wound up hitting me, and I took him to the east side, and I was, and I was doing a little something over there. It wasn't, I mean, I was eating, so I started doing a little something. I was, you know, I was flipping the bottles. It wasn't, wasn't what I was used to, but my brother was, he was grinding. He was doing his thing, That's right. waiting for opportunity again. So uh, I kept on coming back at him. He was like, "Damn, you flipping these like that?" I said, "Yo, I'm doing all right." But you know, I had money saved up, so I was, even if I wasn't flipping it, I was just taking the money out of my stash and paying him to have him believe that I was flipping it like that. So I wind up stepping to him, telling him, like, yo, man, you know, I got a little store over there I'm trying to get. We can go half-half on it, whatever, and we could do something. So he was like, yo, all right. So he said, yo, go ahead and get the store, and I got you. So I went up, and I got the store, whatever, gave the man, like, 10000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I had the little store over there for a little while. But the east side, you know, it wasn't really like the west side. It was it was cool, but the money wasn't there like that okay. around there. They wasn't used to spending $10 on some, on some Coke and all that around there. But it was all right. So uh, so that that wasn't really coming fast enough for me. So I stepped to him again. I said, yo, man. I said, yo, put me down with you, man. Let me be a part of your crew. You know? This day I stepped to him. I, he he was on, he had the jukebox for it, but he was starting something new on, on 34th Street between 7th and uh, Lennox. Okay. He was starting a new spot over there. And uh, I stepped to him. I was like, yo, man, let me be down with you. And this day I stepped to him. Some dudes had shot at him or stepped to him about something. Okay. Now this is how I got this is how this is how I got in with A. This is how I really became like down with him. Cause the other thing I was just like a, I was just getting hit from him. Okay. But this is how I became down with him. I stepped him on 34th Street. It was at night and he had a couple of his little I'm not even gonna call them soldiers. He had a couple of his little workers around him and all that. And uh, some dudes had shot at him or tried to stick them up or something. And he was telling me this, and he was getting frustrated. And I was like, yeah, whatever. What you, you know, I was, he was upset about it. So, so I was like, yo, what you going to do? And he was like, yo, we're going we gonna to go find him cash. We're going to this, that. I said, well, bet. I said, just give me uh, 15, 20 minutes. I got to shoot back to the east side, get my guns, and I'm back over here. Okay. So I do all that. You know, everybody do their thing. His, you know, his little workers, they go get whatever little guns they got, wherever they got them at. And so when I was the only one that came back. Me and another person. You know, came back, and uh, I'm the only one that came back, and well, like another guy. So we, I came back with two guns blazing. I said, well, let's go do this, man. Okay. So we wound up finding, we wound up looking for the dudes, and we wound up finding them, and we wound up finding one of them, and we wound up busting them down in order, but he got into his building or whatever, so we couldn't, we couldn't get to him in order, but we wound up letting them know, like, yo, Produced we busting our guns too. Productions. And we was trying to kill this kid, and, uh, and that's how I got in, and he took a liking to that. And, and put me down with him. So now I'm now I'm running with him. After that day, I'm I'm down with him as one of his soldiers. Okay. You know, I'm there. I'm I'm working. So I see opportunity. So I said, okay, this is where I need to be. This is where I need to be. This this is who I need to work with. This is who I need to this is who I need to impress. This is who I need to get up under. So I ain't got no problem with that man. I know how to grind. I started from the bottom. So I wind up getting with him, and uh, I truly have to say and give all give all you know to AZ. When I met A, I've Produced never looked back. I'm going to give him that. Definitely, everything I've achieved as far as in the game and this and that was definitely because of A. 
So now we're in 34th Street, we're 45th Street, and I'm down with him, and I'm doing all the dirty work. And, you know, I'm, I'm taking care of, you know, if, if dudes is, you know, I don't know if you remember this kid named Travis, you know. He had put this kid Travis down with him, mm-hmm. and the kid Travis was uh, slipping his own bottles up in the spot, and AZ knew. One thing about A, he knew his work, man. He knew what he should get, what he shouldn't get. Produced by you know, Contrast Productions. But, you know, A was also, he also used to send people to go buy his stuff to see if it was being switched. And we found out that this kid Travis was switching up the bottles. So make a long story short with that, we wound up beating the kid Travis down. Who wound up beating the kid down? Me. I wound up beating the kid Travis down, trying to throw him out the second floor window. Okay. Because, you know, he robbing for my man A. That's right. And I got to let you know you can't do this. So I tried to throw the kid out the window and all that, and we, we didn't succeed. I was trying to tie his neck up. I was trying to tie this joint around his neck and throw him out the window and let him hang. Okay. So we didn't succeed, so we wound up beating him down and all that. So we got rid of him. So that was, you know, that was dad. And I used to be the person that, A, you know, AZ used to put me through a lot of little, he used to test me a lot of little times. He used to, like, he would give me a, a certain amount of bricks or whatever and tell me, like, you know, go bottle them up. You know, I was, I, was in, I was getting in positions like that where he was trusting me with the work and telling me to go bottle it up. You were actually bottling up whole bricks? Huh? Whole bricks? Yeah, whole been- bricks. Yeah, A. A didn't play that. A didn't play bottle up this. If you had to bottle up the whole brick. Uh-huh. Because the spot, not, not just 34th, but 45th Street was moving so quickly at times. It was doing two, three bricks a day. You know. How much was that bottled up? Bottled up, that was probably about, one brick was probably seen. Produced probably by seen contracts, 40, productions. Off of one brick. So that was a lot of bottles. So I used to take it, I used to take it to my mother's house sometimes bottle it up, you know what I'm saying, that's when I was still with Mama, you know, I used to go back to Mama Deuce's house and all that, that's right. and I used to do my thing there, I had other little apartments that I used to do, so he used to hit me with the bricks, say, yo, bottle this up, call me when you finish, or he would come, so like I said, he was trusting me with the work, and I was, uh, like, again, I was working my way in position, so I was always with him, you know what I mean, doing my thing and all that, we started getting real popular as far as people started saying, like, yo, Produced them kids by is contracts, it. productions. Kids. yeah, them kids is getting it because, they seen AZ had the, the Audis and the little Benzes and all that, mm-hmm. and this car, that car, and then, you know, so they started hearing about it. They said, yo, that jukebox is getting money, and people started seeing the lines and this and that. I mean, it was ridiculous. Again, it was ridiculous. Like, we used to tell customers, yo, wait on the other side. And that's how come you had to bottle up everything once we got it, because it was, it, you could never give it a time where they was going to wait. You couldn't have the customers waiting too long. You had to always be ready for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they was coming like that. You figured we was giving up almost close to a half a gram for $10. For $10. No cut, straight raw. Produced by Contrast no Productions. Cut, no cut, no, no chaser, straight off the brick into the bottle. Coming straight off the brick into the bottles, man. And um, and we was bottling it up. And like I said, he used to put me through a little bit. But I, I seen the bigger picture, so there was no reason for me. And I wasn't trifling like that, where I had to stash bottles and this and that. I was happy. Right. You know, he was treating me good. I was happy in my position. I, I seen the bigger picture. Right. So there was no reason for me to be petty like that because he wasn't petty with me. Right. A was a good dude, man. I mean, A was a good dude. Not until now that I've seen the pettiness, but back then he was a good dude and he was and he was allowing me to eat. So that was that. And so now the jukebox is getting real popular. So now the stick-up kids come out. The, the stick-up kids are starting to come out. You know what I mean? they starting to come out and... Uh, they robbed the spot. They hit the spot a couple of times. Okay. They hit the spot a couple of times, so that was really becoming a concern of AZ's. He was it's really getting frustrated that they kept on coming. Feds magazine. So um, that was becoming a concern for AZ. Yeah, that was coming a big concern. That was that was that was that was becoming a concern for AZ because uh, he wasn't really used to dealing with that. And uh, they used to come in and close the gate and just rob everything that was in there. You know, mm-hmm. take the bottles, the money, and nobody ever nobody never got killed when they used to come stick us up. So I, you know, I stepped, hey, like, yo, hey, we got to put a stop to this. And, you know, I'm quickly thinking murder. Okay. We got to, we got to put the murder game down. So we, we wind up, we wind up finding out who's setting it up. So we wind up snatching one kid up and throwing him in a van. Okay. And making him tell us who the other stick-up kids were. Okay. So he wind up doing that. And we didn't, we didn't, we didn't kill him that day. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't kill him that day. And, uh, and I was basically ahead, I was basically in charge of this. This uh, this mission, all right. Because I was putting it down like that, so I wound up, I wound up recruiting two dudes. I wound up recruiting two other dudes, and uh, produced we by took Contrast care of the Productions. Okay. We the, the ones who were sticking up, the ones the ones who we caught up to, they got it. The ones who we didn't, they either in jail or 
they never came back again once they seen that their friends was falling. All right, I got you. Yeah, once they seen that their friends was falling and uh, locations is locations that the bodies was, a couple of bodies fell on like 145th Street and 8th Avenue. You got charged with a few bodies over there? Oh, well, we get to that. Okay. Yeah, we get to that. Um, So we, uh, we took care of it, and the, and the, and, and the stick-up the stick up, the stick up thing stopped okay. after that, of course. Uh, the stick-up kids, they stopped coming. And um, But AZ was really concerned because it was like getting out of hand. He, he kind of felt it was getting out of hand, and he felt that, you know, I just, this is just not worth it to me no more. And uh, so he, that's when he started to really put more focus on 34th Street. Okay. You understand? Mm-hmm. So where'd you take it from there? Okay, so he started to put more focus on 34th Street. So now he has to make a decision. Like, who is he going to leave? Because 44th Street is still getting money. Mm-hmm. It's not as much as when he first started, but it's still good, good money. So now, like I said, going back, AZ was putting focus on 34th Street now because he was getting, he didn't really want to deal with the drama of 40, 50. So he had an apartment that we used to do things in, in Lennox Terrace, right across the street from the spot he was starting to build up on 34th Street. He called like a little semi-meeting amongst like his brother and the kid Stanley and all that, and he asked them like, do they want the spot? But they were so used to being, you know, basically like spoon-fed mm-hmm. that they wasn't ready to leave the nest. And, and A was like the nest and the comfort. They wasn't ready to leave from up under him. So they was like saying, no, we're going to stay down here with you, A, on 34th Street and start this new spot. And they was used to that. They liked that. Okay. And the kid Stanley was like, no, nah, I don't want it, you know, or too many problems up there. So when it came to me, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. So that Produced was the day by contracts, productions. when Pope was doing his thing. So he, so he, uh, he said, all right, well, then it's yours, man. This is what you do. You, you know what to do because you, you've been down a while now, so you know how to do it. You know this and that. So we had an agreement that he would see about ten, fifteen thousand off of every, something like every brick or something, like 10000 off of every brick. Mm-hmm. Because he was, he was still giving me, I didn't have a connect yet. That's okay. why give me bricks and all that so and my money my money was funny okay. and um now i know i got me a, i got me a gold mine now because i still seen the gold mine and i was willing to protect it at any means necessary okay. and if it was taking somebody's life and killing somebody because they wanted to come take what i was doing then so be it okay so so i knew i wasn't gonna really be up at the spot like that because i that was i was i thought i was past that hanging so what i did was i i got with some i got with some kids from the area up there kid name was Jay. He was pretty known up around that area, so I knew, because I'm saying to myself, as A is telling me he's going to give me the spot, I'm saying to myself, okay, now I got I to gotta put my own crew together and get a crew up in here, because everybody else is going to want to go with A and hustle with A. That's right. So, I said, I got to get my own crew together. So, I was thinking about bringing some east side dudes up there, but then I said, no, you got to get some dudes from around the area to avoid problems. So, the kid Kato introduced me to the kid Jay, so I met the kid Jay, and I was like, yo, this is what's happening. I got 40 fish, I got the jukebox. But put you down, and whoever else you put under you, that's on you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's your crew. Okay. But I'm just dealing with him. You follow me? I'll follow you. So my, 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 my thing is with him. So AZ's giving me the coke, whatever, for a little while. So I'm just, I'm just going along with it because it's, 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 it's respect that he gave me this, so it's only right that he make, I make sure he sees some money out of it. And it's still, it's still almost like his spot, but I'm running it. Okay. So he's giving me the coke and all that, and, um, and I got the kid Jay down, so... What he's giving me, I'm hitting the kid J. So, give you an example. If AZ was paying, like, I think at the time, 14, 14 for a brick, he was charging me. He was charging me. If he was paying 14, 15, he was charging me 25 for the joint. I was giving it to the kid for 35. Because it's my spot. To him, it's my spot. I'm right. paying for the bottles. I'm paying for every every loss. I'm paying for the coke and all that. All you're doing is making sure that the money's right. And the work is getting put in there, right? A getting his, tw- his A getting his little ten, twelve. I'm getting my little t- ten, twelve. Then the kids, he's seeing his little fifteen or whatever, and then he paying the crew in order. That's right. all he got to do is pay the crew. Right. Well, how many how many other dudes he got down with him? Right. So everybody's getting money. So this goes on for a little while. I I I I, I save up enough money to start doing my own thing now, getting my own bricks. That's right. So I remember going with A a couple of times to the connect in order. So I wind up seeing the connect. So they still thinking AZ got something to do with 450, and they used to come see him around there. So they come around there, and then they see me now. They're like, yo, what's up, man? I was like, no, what's up? What's up with y'all? What's, you trying to do something? One thing led to another. I wind up dealing with them. Okay. So now I step to A, and I'm like, yo, A, yo, this is what's happening, man. I'm, I saved up enough money. I'm starting to see Raymond. I'm starting to go see them and this and that. 
So his 34th Street is starting to pump too. So he's like, yo, whatever, man. You go ahead. That's your thing. So okay. eventually I just fade him out. And he don't get no more money from 45th Street. Right. And he's cool with that because he's... So they wasn't greedy for money, so he's cool with his 34th Street thing, because that's starting to do like a brick, a brick a day, a brick every two days. So, uh, so 45th Street becomes all mine now. 45th oh. Street is mine now. Okay. No one getting no money out of there but me and the kid Jay. And, so the I got the kid Jay now. The kid Jay is good. He, he happy. He on. He, he rolling. 45th Street done picked back up, you know, because I'm getting, you know, I'm seeing, you know, I'm getting three, four, five, six, seven, eight bricks now from the kids. So... We flung 40, 50 again. It's back. It's back to where A, A had it at. But you know, nothing, nothing good ever. Nothing like that ever lasts forever. Nothing ever lasts forever. So people start opening up like crack spots around there. But if they was opening up crack spots, we didn't really care about that. As long as they wasn't opening up no powder coke thing type thing. Right. So uh, one thing led to another. Little beef started coming. The money started. The money started getting kind of. The money started getting kind of low. The kid J. The kid J started getting kind of. He started getting kind of conniving, and I, and I say conniving as far as, you know, I used to get a lot of little phone calls like, yo, because he used to have this kid down with him named Manny, so I used to get a lot of little phone calls like, yo, uh, Manny had to jump out the cab, and he left two bricks in the cab, police got this, police got that, so I started losing money. Right. That kind of like faded out, and uh, so again, I, I started seeing the, the bigger picture like, yo, I'm losing money, it's not really worth it to me no more up here. Right. So... In that whole thing, before the end to 40, 50 for me, we gonna jump into to, to a rich situation, okay? Okay. Um, me and Rich, like I said, when he came home after that year in prison, I think it was for a pistol. We 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 hooked up. We became cool, real cool. You know, it was like it was like it was sort of you know the best way to put it is that I was filling that spot that L.A. had left. Okay. Because it was rich in L.A. Anybody you asked it was all about rich in L.A. back in the 80s and all that. Okay, now what'd you say? I said I was filling that spot. Okay. Uh, basically, if you if you really looked at it, people who knew about Rich in L.A., I was filling that spot that L.A. had left. Okay. Because he got killed. How did he get killed? L.A. LA got killed outside of the rooftop. Uh, he got shot up outside of the rooftop. This when the rooftop was real popular, like 85. Again, me and, me and, me and, me and Rich's relationship became real strong, man. We became, we became like the best of buddies and all that. I mean, a and what people, what people Feds don't magazine. really understand is that all three of us was doing our own thing. Okay. You know, we were, we were all doing our own thing, but it wasn't no problem if A needed whatever, whatever kind of money or if Rich needed or if I needed. It wasn't no problem for me to come to these dudes and be like, yo, let me get that, man. I need that for something. So, in, 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 Rich, in Rich and I's friendship, you know, we used to like, we used to like a lot of the same cars. You know, we was the first, we was like some of the first young dudes to bust out with the convertible BMs. And the, all three of us were the ones who first came out when they switched over to the new Jeeps. Okay. We was the first ones with them, you know. Uh, me and A bust out with the 7s. Black and white? Yeah. The 735s. Okay. I remember we bust out with them. And I, uh... Did pay cash? Huh? Did y'all pay cash? Oh, every car we had was cash. Every car. Oh, we had titles to everything. We didn't know nothing about finance. No. Out of 50 cars, out of 50, 55 cars, only one was ever financed for me. And I was, I was trying to build some credit for somebody. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I had, we bust out with the sevens. And I, A had, because A, first A went and bought a black joint. Okay. So then I seen Josh, man, I'm going to give me one too. So I like the black joint too. So when I came to 132nd Street with my black joint, he seen the joint, he pulled me over, he was like, yo, Paul, you know, we both got black joints, we ain't, you know, ain't no reason for both, both of us to have black joints, and it made sense to what he said. So I didn't know, you know, I didn't know he was going to get the black joint. Okay. But I already had ordered it, so I went and got out, and it didn't make no difference to me if he had a black joint, I had a black joint, I didn't really care. Okay. So anyway, so being, being, being A, A, up to A's my man, I said, okay, no problem. So I went back to the car dealer, gave the man a little extra $500, and said, yo, give me, another, give me another color. Give me a white joint with some blue seats. He had a white joint with some blue seats there. I said, well, give me that, give me that joint. Okay. So I got the white joint with the blue seats. So I came back, and I got, I got more attention with that joint. Okay. So the joints was hot. Okay. The, the big sevens rang. We was the first two young cats with them. Okay. The 735 was no other young cat. These joints was about 50, 55,000 at that time. That's right. And we bust out cash with them joints. So, it's a contract so in production that, for Feds in Magazine. That, in doing that, 
I was with I was hooked up with 16th Street then, so they was uh. We, and I had my own motorcycle, so they was going out of town. Matter of fact, they was making a trip to Myrtle Beach, taking the bikes down there for bike weekend. Okay. So we threw our bikes on the back trailers and all that. I had my seven. Me and the kids stand. Rich and Rich and A didn't want to go, so the kids stand. He said, "Yo, I'm go. I go with you, po." Okay. So I wasn't really a highway driver. You know, I like riding in the city front and checking out the hookers and all that. Mm -hmm. And I ain't feel like driving no 13 hours down to no damn Myrtle Beach. Okay. But I wanted to break my joint in and all that, so they had their Benzes and all that down there, and they was older than them. They had their Benzes and their BMs and all that, so I said, man, I'm going to take my seven. Brand new joint, I'm going to put some miles, get some miles on this joint. Okay. So we go down to Myrtle Beach with them. There was a bunch of us. We go down there, Stanley driving, so we get down there. So it's morning time when we get down there. I'm, I'm checking out the scenery. All this is leading up to how I got to D.C. Okay. I'm checking out the scenery and all that, and uh, at Myrtle Beach, I'm saying, man, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm going to see hookers, and I'm thinking I'm going to see the females. Right. I said, man, I don't, I don't, nah, I don't like this. So I tell Stanley, I said, yo, man, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going to this Virginia Beach thing that I heard about happening down in Virginia, man. Okay. So the day we got to Myrtle Beach, that same day, I said, yo, you feel like driving? Now nah, he got to drive like another six hours back towards Virginia Beach. Okay. So he said, yo, and Stanley was that, Stanley was that kind of driver, and, you know, so he said, yo, no problem. So I left Darnell and all them cats down, and them. I left them down to Myrtle Beach, and I, and I broke out. Okay. They had my bike or whatever. I, I rolled up out of there. Me and Stanley went to Virginia Beach. It's me and him. So now we rolling up in Virginia Beach early in the morning. It's about eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Off the hook. We roll up in there with that white joint with, with, with the white piping and the, and the white rims. So we roll up in the town with that joint. And at, at, at this time, Stanley's driving the car at the, at the time. I'm just in the passenger seat. We roll up in this town. Everybody's looking at uh, whoever's out in the morning getting breakfast or going to the restaurants. You know, they looking at these joints. These two young cats coming up in here, and we just we like, man, what the hell? Where, 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 where the hell is everybody? So we don't really know nobody on there. We don't know what's happening. So we wind up getting a room. When this was the first year, I think this was '86 for me or something. '87. Mm -hmm. We wake up. It's around four, five o'clock in the evening now. The joint is jam packed it was like seven eight girls to like every one dude mm -hmm. so now in that i met some uh dc cats down there okay and uh i met some dc cats down there at the time because they you know they they seen the joint young out of town getting money so i met them i met them and uh we exchanged numbers or whatever and they told me about this they told me about this patty labelle thing that was happening uh king's dominium okay so Again, uh, Rich and them, you know, they wasn't really trying to go nowhere like that, you know, they was more to staying in Harlem. Okay. So I told A, I said, yo, A, let me hold that 190, man, and, uh, with the Louis Vuitton seats and all that. So I took that joint down to Patti LaBelle, to the Patti LaBelle show. Okay. I had Gucci stuff from Dapper Dan. That's right. So they never seen none of that stuff in a car and all that. So, and I had that 190, and I'm young, and Produce I'm pushing that joint. They're like, productions. New York Tech. Anytime I went to any of them events, I made sure I had New York tags. New York tags. Wasn't no jersey, none of that crap. New York tags. So that was my first, like, out-of-town experience. So in that, I met some girls from D.C. because they was really on the Gucci jackets that I had in the Louis Vuitton. So they stepped to me and was like, well, who was your name, this and that. I told them where I was from. Blah, blah, blah. One thing led to another. We exchanged numbers. They the ones that told me, said, yo, the end of August, the last weekend or whatever, Virginia Beach be having this thing. Okay. So that's how I got there. So we invite them up to New York. So we like, yo, man, they come to New York. We got to we gotta lay the script down. Let them know, we, you know, we doing our thing up here. Okay. So me and Rich, we decide, yo, we want to buy some Porsches. So we had this dude out in the Porsche dealer in Jersey. So we went out there, and that's when the new 944 Turbos was coming out. Okay. And they, were, they also weren't convertible. They were new. They were new joints. They were just hitting the market. They wanted like 40, 40 for each joint or something. So we was like, yo, what are we going to get? So Rich the Burgundy one he liked. I wanted a black one, but the, again, they didn't have it ready for that day, and we wasn't trying to wait. So I seen a silver one with some like like some like some burgundy seats, and the, co the color combination was cool, and I, and I just visioned it with some silver BBs on there and all that, and Rich joint was going to have some burgundy joints. So we, we, we had about... 70, 75 in a, ba in a, in a, in a bag. And they wanted, I said, they wanted like anywhere from 35 to, to 40,000 for each joint. Okay. So we was like, yo, here's 75 for two joints right now. And it was like, bet. Oh. <laughs> so now we ready. We, you know, 
we 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 got new joints. They gonna see. They gonna be like, okay, we we messing with some ballers. Okay. <laughs> so uh, and the weekend went the weekend went beautiful. They had a wonderful time. Okay. And they went back to D.C. Okay. So now they back in D.C. So I'm keeping in contact with the girl Karen. Rich is keeping in contact with the girl Inga. So so now. That's what 45th, so 45th Street is starting to just really just become a headache to me now. Okay. So I'm starting to say to myself, you know what? I'm about to leave this thing alone. So in the process of doing that, I go down to D.C. The girl, Karen, invites me down to D.C. And I go on down there. I put my jewelry together, and I go on down there by myself. And I'm getting familiar with everybody. When I'm in D.C. for a little while, I'm in D.C. with the girl, Karen, because she know everybody. Everybody know her, because she used to mess with some serious ballers in that town. So I'm, I'm in there. So... I come to find out that they think I'm the police down there. Because she takes me up to the, this place called the Florida Avenue Grill where back then everyone used to go eat. And if you was a baller, you go there to eat and get your car washed. So they started whispering and all that amongst the whispers. She has an uncle that found out that, yo, that dude you with, a lot of these dudes think you, they think he's a, a, a federal agent. But in the same time, I don't know that this kid named Red Jack from the east side that I used to look up to as far as in the hustling game, he's down there. Also, okay. with this kid that we wind up uh, killing later on, he's down there with him getting money. And uh, he's down there with him getting money. And uh, he starts hearing that I'm down there. He starts letting them know, like, yo, that kid out for now. He ain't, no, ain't nothing police Produced about him. Contracts, he's doing his thing up in New York and this and that. He's legit. He's, if he's down here, he's trying to come down here. You know, he starts telling If he's down here, he's trying to come down here and do some things and all that. So down there at the time... What was real popular was uh, the Chevy Blazers, the little joints. Okay. Two-door Chevy Blazers. A lot of, a lot of dudes had them joints. Um, so those were real popular down there. So I said, man, I'm going to get me one of them joints and just blend right in. So now I got me a new truck. So they really looking like, yo, he was just out here with a Porsche. That's in the shop. Now he got a truck. Right. So, again, my name is getting popular. And I meet this, I meet this kid named uh, Fat Rodney. We, me and him became real cool. He, he got killed later on, but me and him became real cool. So I wound up hooking up with this kid named Cliff, Cliff Cobbs. Okay. He come from a real uh, known neighborhood in D.C. Okay. And a lot of people respected him and his brother Roy and that whole little crew. It was a whole little crew of them. Because D.C., they quick for their guns, man. Okay. They kill you in a minute, especially if they know you from out of town. So, so I wound up staying with the girl Karen and her family, and I wound up just... Giving 40 50 to the kid, Jay. Now my thing is out of town, and I'm a wholesaler. Okay. So I wind up getting a couple of hundred thousand out of my stash. I didn't deal no more with blocks and things of that nature. I wind up just going down there being a wholesaler. Okay. And, uh, again, I was seen anywhere. At first, I was seeing, like, maybe 6000 off of every brick. Then, you know, as, as prices and other people start coming into the town and all that, I wind up seeing maybe four. And then it got to a point I was seeing anywhere from... The lowest it got was anywhere from 2500 to 3000 Okay. off a brick. And that was good for me because sometimes I would go to D.C. with with 30 bricks and sell them all in one day. Woo. Yeah, because I had, I had good customers. I had anywhere from 10 to 15 good customers because I was giving it to them at a good price because if D.C. was letting them go, if someone had them in D.C. for 21 22 I was letting them go for 18 okay. So in, in all of that, I wound up meeting some other cats this young cat by the name of Pop and this other cat's name uh, and the process of, of putting coke in that town I'm, I wind up meeting some cat's named Kirk Bone okay. this, this fat kid named Kirk Bone Rafe, the kid Rafe he was a he was a well known he was one of, he was like one of the biggest cats coming up out of D.C. Okay. he doing life now in prison but I wind up meeting him and you know when he went to jail that's when I really basically almost like really took over the town so I wind up so things started getting a little things started getting kind of crazy for me. I uh, I was into, like my little man Pop, I was introduced to him by some other cats. And he was a young, wild, 15-year-old, 15 15-year-old 15 kid coming out of South East that was killing anything moving. And he just wanted to be up under somebody that was going to look out for him. Okay. So I wound up taking him up under my wing and looking out for him. And, uh, and, 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 and through him, I wound up meeting another cat named Wayne, named Wayne Perry. Okay. Now this kid here, this kid here, you know what I mean? He had the town unlocked, and I mean, he had the town locked on fear and was putting his murder game down. You hear me? Anyone who mentioned his name knew. When they, when they mentioned his name, they mentioned murder in the same sentence because he was about his work. 
and didn't have no problem with talking about it and telling everybody and didn't care. And if you tried to go testify or tell him, he was getting you. So the young kid, Pop, wound up coming to me saying, yo, my man is in jail, this and that. So his bail was like something. I think I had to pay like 10%, which was like 10000 Okay. I wound up giving up the whole 10000 because I, I seen the bigger picture. Right. I said, if I get this kid out and the reputation that he has, then all that will come on my side. Right. So I wound up giving up the whole 10, and it was, a, it was a 10 well worth it. So I wound up getting him out. I didn't really step to him as soon as I got him out. I just let it be known to my little man. We How wound up a 15-year-old man know him? Because my little man had an uncle that knew him. Okay. So my little man had the reputation of being wild and about his business. About his business. So his uncle was wild, too, my little man's uncle. And him and the kid Wayne knew each other. Okay. So, and then Wayne, that's how he met him, and Wayne knew what my little man was about. So, you know, killers respect killers and all that type of thing. So, we wound up hooking up and uh, we became real tight, me and the kid Wayne. And, you know, I got a lot of, I got a lot of negative feedback. They, a lot of people were like, yo, we ain't really trying to mess with you like that because you got the kid Wayne running with you. Because a lot of dudes sca were scared of this dude. You know, you know, it was little things going around like, yo, if you, if you go get coke from the kid Poe after you get the coke, he puts the kid Wayne in them on you. So a lot of dudes were scared, but they was just doing that because they were scared of him, and they was really upset to see him out of jail. Right. So they was like, you know, they, they was hoping he'd stay in jail. Right. So they they really feared this dude, and this, this kid was a real good dude, man. He was a loyal dude, man. And um, again, so he really respected that I got him out, and he felt he felt that I owed him. Okay. He felt that he owed me. Okay. So one thing led to another, and he became my like. He became not, I'm not going to say my lieutenant because he didn't really have anything to do with my business. He became, he had something to do with it, but he didn't know, he didn't handle the drugs and none of that stuff. He handled more of the, like, the security aspect of it, like, okay. if it was time to put the murder game down, or if someone was getting disrespectful, you know, or if someone was trying to come at me, or, okay. then that's when he stepped in. I had, I had the trust from him, but I just always said, the less he knows about as far as where my stashes are, where I'm keeping the money, Right. Is that the better it is? Because I always said, well, I'm worth more him alive than dead. Right. Because if he don't know where the money's at or the status at, why would he ever want to bring harm to me when I'm feeding him? Right. So that so I became real strong in D.C. along with my own rep from New York, and now with him, we became real strong in the town as far as like, yo, they dangerous. They dangerous. And uh, I pretty much had the town on, on. I pretty much had that small town on lock for a good. For a good period of time, man. It was like, because we went at a lot of the dudes that was supposedly holding it down. When you say you went at them, what do you mean? When I say I went at them, because a lot of people were starting to talk about, well, we got to get rid of the kid Pope because he's getting too much money, and he's not even from here. I did hear you got shot. I got shot because they was trying to kidnap me in D.C. My little man, I had a, I had a little dude, I had a little dude, one of, the, one of the, this little dude is the dude that killed Rich with me. He was getting money, too. He was one of my best customers. He was really holding it. He, he had a beef with another crew, and um, we couldn't really get at them because they knew, they knew us, and uh, they knew how we was coming and all that. So we had to, like, we had to, like hire, like, an a ally. Uh -huh. And this kid, was, he volunteered to be the ally, but he had... This kid volunteered to be the ally, but he wound up being a statistic. The day I was supposed to meet him up at this car wash, because I had bought these cars and I had these guns for him, the day I was supposed to meet him up at this car wash, he had other plans. They was going to try to kidnap me. Okay. So we would just leave that debt. They was going to try to kidnap me, and uh, I wound up getting hit that day. You wound up getting hit? Yeah. I wound up getting hit in my ribs. The only thing that saved me, like I said, the only thing that saved me that day, because I was going to get this girl, the only thing that saved me that day was that as I'm talking to this dude, he looks over my shoulder. And when he looked over my shoulder, I followed his eyes. And when I followed his eyes, I seen about four dudes coming to try to grab me. Okay. And I start running. Next thing I know, I feel bullets and all that coming past my head and hitting off the wall and all that. And one caught me in the ribs. That's when you figured, hey, put Wayne Perry in effect. Yeah, that's when I, yeah, that's when I figured. Because he was already there, but then I just said, okay, now it's really just time to just bring him closer. Okay. And um, because, like I said, he knew everybody. Everyone that was about that conniving, trifling, killing people for this and that. Like, what was the downfall? The downfall for, for, for that whole thing is, like, again, it was a domino effect. The whole thing was, you know, rich family, 
Richard Richard's family, which is a uh, uh, peanut. Okay. Uh, Nathaniel Watkins. Okay. He told on me. Him and his girl told on me, and uh, they told on me because peanut one time needed like 125 grams for like a a good customer that he had, and he couldn't wait. Okay. So Richard called me, said, "Yo, Paul, do me a favor, man. Uh, I'm not gonna come see you." And uh, take care of him, and I'll take care of you when you come to New York. Okay. So, I did that for Rich. I did that. I did that for Rich. I, I took care. So I, I called, a, and we, we wind up hooking up, and uh, his cousin comes to D.C. to get that. Okay. Several months later, his little organization down there get busted. So, they wind up getting like crazy time, and now, after this, Richard is dead, and um, the only thing I ever did with his cousin was that 125 grams. You follow me? I follow you. They wind up telling the fans that I was their supplier, that I done shipped over 500 keys to Virginia for them, uh, that I was the man, that I was their connect. Because okay. Rich is dead now, so now they got to come up with a better story. So they wind up putting everything on me, and I wind up getting a complaint against me and a, war a federal warrant put on me, so now I'm on the run for the next two, three years from that case down there. But you were still able to be in D.C.? Yeah. On the run? On the run. Man, let me tell you something. I was... When, when my man Wayne was located at in Southwest, so he was in Southwest, I was two blocks away from the federal building when they was looking for me. You just stayed they, in the house? Huh? You just stayed in the house? No, I wasn't in the house. I was on the block outside. On the block outside? Two blocks away from the federal building. They didn't know where I was at. Now, why, why did you kill Rich? 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 The, the question to everybody with that Rich... The reason why Rich, Richard, okay, I had a connect. I had a young Dominican connect off of Broadway. And, um, you know, he wasn't really in position at the time when I was really dealing with him to really front me crazy. You know, he would front me one or two, but he wasn't really in the position where, you know, I wanted, we wanted him to front us like, you know, 50, 60, 100 keys. We didn't want to put up no money. We wanted, we want you to front us and we'll pay you when we, you know, Get the get the drugs. Or we didn't. Or we. Or if we got a hundred from you, we'll put up some of the money and we'll pay you the rest. You know what I mean? Right. But well, we don't have to go in the stash for our money. So my connect wasn't in position at the time like that. And Richard was dealing with his connect that he met when he did that year in prison. He met a connect when he did that year in the Bronx house. Okay. So this kid was hitting him lovely, but then it stopped. The kid, the kid, caught a dry spell. Since you ain't got nobody to get no drugs from, deal with my man. He'll give you a good price and. And the money I'm bringing from out of town, you know, will hit him. And when he starts from us the, the, the drugs, you let me know. Because I had other connects. I had like two or three other connects that I was able to deal with, too. So the time came where he was going to start fronting us to cope. Okay. But I was out of town. Since I was out of town, he wasn't able to catch up to me. It was easy for him to just deal with Rich. Right. Give it to Rich and let Rich give it to me. Right. So that's what happened. If he gave 100... I was supposed to get 50. You know what I mean? I know. At the same price that he was charging Rich, I was supposed to get it for that price too. Right. But before this came along, I was already dealing with Rich with his connect. So if his connect was charging whatever, he, he I didn't have no problem with Rich making a thousand dollars, two thousand off of me, because right. I was coming to spend three, four hundred thousand with him. But now my connect is giving it from twelve, thirteen. My original connect is giving it for twelve, thirteen, and I'm supposed to get half of that at that price. But Rich got me thinking that the coke that I'm getting from him is still coming from his connect. So then I, I wind up bumping into my connect because I wind up staying up there a couple of days. And uh, I wind up running into my connect. Okay. So I, wind, I bump into him. So I said, yo, what's up, man? I said, yo, what's up, man? When are you going to uh, start, you know, looking out for a brother, man? Okay. He's like, what you talking about? I said, man, you know what I'm talking about. When are you going to start front us this and that? And he had a lot of respect for me. I had a lot of respect for him. And uh, so I said, yo, when you, so he's like, yo, what are you talking about? I just gave Rich like 60 joints. This time he had just gave Rich like 60 bricks. Okay. And 30 of, them were, 30 of those bricks were mine. Okay. So I'm saying, no, you didn't. You didn't. Rich got coke from his man. He said, man, Pope, I'm telling you, man. I said, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, all right, man. And he described them. And I remember I had just got these like round, these round joints from Rich that were real good. And I think they had like Reagan or somebody on them. They were real, real good, man. And he, des he described them to me and everything. So I said, yo, all right. I said, yo, we never had this conversation, man. 
So I, I didn't, I didn't really say much about it. I just had it in my mind like, damn, Mitch getting over on me like that. So I didn't say nothing to him the first time. So I went back down to D.C. to get rid of my bricks and all that. And and I had developed a relationship with one of my, with a dude that just started off as one of my customers. Me and him had built a relationship where we became like real tight, like me and Rich in New York. This kid was me and Rich in D.C. Okay. What was his name? His name was Gary. Gary. Yeah, little Gary. Is that the one that they say got his dick cut off? Yeah, that's the one they say got his dick cut off, yeah. Was that a situation from you? Yeah. That was? I wound up killing little Gary later on. This kid was good. He was probably about three years younger than me. He was a murderer, too. He was about he was about his murder game. Okay. This was my little man, so uh, so I went back down to D.C., man, and I told my little man, I said, yo, man. I said, yo, man, do Rich up in New York, man. And he knew Rich because... He knew Rich from me bringing him to New York because we used to do the firework thing in New York. Okay. I used to, every 4th of July, I used to spend like 10, 15,000 with these guineas downtown and get me like a, a, tr a truck full of fireworks and come back to my neighborhood and blow it all up and all that. Okay. Around 105th Street and this time I did it around 102nd Street with Rich and all that and I brought my little man because they never seen nothing like that being in D.C. They couldn't really do stuff like that so I brought him to New York to show him how we live up there and all that. Okay. So he wanted me and Rich in that process and all that. So this day I went back to D.C. I said, yo, man, this dude's here, man. I just found out this dude is jerking me, man. He said, what are you talking about, Paul? I said, man, this dude getting these bricks for my man. I'm supposed to get half at this price. And he charging me this price because I'm thinking it's still coming from his connect. Mm -hmm. And the first thing come out, he's my man. Man, let's kill him, man. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, just hold up for me. Let me think about this thing. So... I wound up calling Rich. I said, yo, Rich, uh, everything all right? You, you, your, man, your man back on? So I'm just checking. I said, your man back on? He said, oh, yeah, my man just gave me some more joints. You, you coming up? I said, yeah, I'll be there. Okay. I said, all right. I told my little man, I said, yo, we're going to New York, man, and uh, we're going to go see Rich. No, first I went to New York. First I went to New York. I took care of my business with him. I spent about, I spent about a half a million dollars with him okay. and uh, got my bricks and all that. And uh, he, uh, I think he was getting them from, he was also getting bricks from like Fritz and them. I don't know if you ever heard of the kid Fritz. Yeah, I heard of Fritz. Yeah, he was, he was, Fritz was getting boatloads of that stuff. I wound up taking it back to D.C. So I'm still not saying that, so I'm saying my little man, I said, yo, man, that's it, man. I'm going to go back to New York. I said, yo, I'm going to ask Rich. I'm going to step to him because I'm like, I'm really like just fed up with it now. I said, yo, I'm going to ask Rich who he got that coke from. This last thing I got, who he getting this coke from? And uh, if he if he lied to me again, I said it's over. Okay. I'm taking him out. So now I told my little man this. I'm saying, yo, you come. I said, yo, we gonna go to New York. I had just got me a customized van. I just bought me a customized van, them big joints with the TV and the bed and all that. Okay. So I had just bought one of those, and it was up there in the shop getting the system done and all that. So uh, I told my little man, I said, yo, we gonna uh, go to New York. We gonna fly to New York. I'm going uh, to get with Rich, and I'm going to find out what the hell is going on. Okay. So, uh, one thing led to another, and uh, I don't want to go into all that, you know. But did I, uh, the question is, did I did I have anything, to, did I kill Rich? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I killed Rich. How'd that come about? You just, you just put, because everything on the street said that uh, a limousine pulled up. Huh? A limousine pulled up and put Richard in a car or something of that. That's what they said? Yeah. No, no, no. That's that's what that didn't happen. That's for that's for them to see later on, Antoine. That didn't happen, Antoine. Okay. That didn't happen. But I know the thing is, did I did I kill did I kill Rich and uh Yes. Yes I killed Rich. Why did I kill him? It wasn't personal. It was business. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, because Rich Rich like I told you, like the story I do with the with the connect and all that. Rich, he was lying to me about something that there was no reason to lie to me about. And in my mind, it just told me that if 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 this if this little bit of money can come between what I thought was a was a was a wonderful relationship and a friendship, then no telling what you might sell me down the line for. And I gave him the opportunity to tell me the truth, not once but twice. So when I already made the, when I already made the, the uh, when I already came with the plan with my little man and 
Like, yo, if you lie to me, we just gonna do what we need to do. Then that's what happened. Did I kill the little brother? No, I didn't. That was... You know who that was, right? Right. You know who that was? Right. They said it was a uh, preacher. No, they didn't. That's who it was. They, that's they, who it was. They got, right. Not just preacher, but Richard's uncle, Apple. Right. They did that. And why, what made it seem like I had something to do with it is because where I left Richard, where I left Richard, the boy's body was found almost in that same whole city island area. Now, they said you carried the body all the way from Harlem to City Island? Yeah. You wasn't afraid? No. I mean, once, you know, once, once that first murder, once, that, once, you, once you take care of that first murder in your life, you know, it's, it's like, really, and not, not that this is a, a good thing that I'm saying, but, you know, once, once you do it once, it's like everything else is... No, I wasn't afraid. No, the answer that, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't afraid. I mean, I was doing what I had to do, Antoine. Okay. Definitely got killed in that area, and his body was definitely taken up to around City Island. Okay. Um, he got hit twice. It was just a, yeah, he, he felt something, man, because I, I, I'll tell you this, his hand was on the door, on the doorknob. I had to, I had to pry his hand from the doorknob because it locked on the doorknob. Locked on the doorknob? Yeah, he was trying to get up out of there. Mm. Um, they also said that he scratched your neck. That's a false. That's he a never scratched. Richard, first of all, Richard never seen, Richard never seen it coming, really. He couldn't have scratched my neck because I was the driver, and my little man took care of everything else. And uh, he, uh, no, he didn't scratch. How I got my neck scratched, and it's not they said it. I believe AZ said my neck. Right, AZ said it. Yeah, I believe AZ said my neck. Hold on. Richard didn't scratch my neck. Richard never even seen it coming. Richard never even laid a hand on me. He never knew what was happening. Now, uh, how'd your little man get killed? Now? Little Gary got killed in D.C. He was... And it wasn't because he helped me out with the rich thing and all that. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got my money back that rich jerked me out of. You want to put that? Okay. Definitely got my money back. How'd you do that? Well, remember, I, had, I, just, I just got hit with a bunch of bricks from him. Right. That I was supposed to bring the money back for. Right. I kept that. Oh, you kept that? Yeah, I got, I, got close to, I got close to what he was beating me for back. Okay. Um, but um, he, uh, my little man in D.C., it, 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 it came a thing with him where he was, uh, you know, he was a short kind of guy. He was about 5'1", five 5'2", five real slim in the body, and a real big head. Okay. But he was getting money, though. People didn't know he was getting money. At that time, he was probably holding about a million, two million, and people didn't know okay. that he was holding like that. He was getting it. And uh, he had a real short man complex. Okay. Okay, and... Uh, like I said, we wasn't just business. We wasn't just business partners. We was. I knew a lot of his business. I knew his family. He knew my family in D.C. and in New York. You know, I knew his son's mother. I knew where he laid his head. He knew where I laid my head sometimes. You know, I knew some of his stashes. He knew some of my stashes. We became real close. So, and he was also the one with me with Rich. Okay. So we had a lot of secrets on one another. And um, he became... He had the short man comments, and he became, he started to become real jealous with me as far as through the people, because the people used to, since I was Alpo, people used to see him with me all the time and think he was working for me. Right. Because not until he, not until I came to D.C. really, he started coming out with like Benzes and all, because he seen what I was doing, so he started busting out with little Benzes and all that type of 300 coupes and all that. Right. And I always had the reputation of... If you let me your car, Antoine, automatically that was my car. Right. That was my car. And then if they seen you with it, like, oh, yeah, he driving pole car. So time went on. One day me and him and one of his workers were sitting at a table at a restaurant having a sandwich. Mm-hmm. And uh, he called my wife a bitch. He called my wife a bitch because he was like, man, are you still with that crazy bitch? And I just looked over at him. And I could have took it a little better if it was just me and him. But his, one of his workers was there. Right. And I kind of like gave him that look like, yo, you really disrespected me right now. And so he seen her. She was coming to look for me down southwest because she knew I hung out down there. So the kid, Gary seen her, he was like, yo, there go that bitch. Look at that bitch. Who she looking for? She must be looking for Poe. And my man Wayne heard him say this. And he beat me. He 
beat me later. I was like, yo, Gary was down here talking trash about you and uh, he disrespected your wife. I was gonna kill him right there, but I said, let me get with you first. Cause I was like, no, I still got love for the kid. No, he's just, he's just frustrated right now. And we had a lot of secrets on one another and I always told them before this happened, I said, you know, we know so much about one another that if we was to ever get into any type of confusion or anything, one of us would have to leave. And I'm definitely not going back to New York cause I'm getting money. <laughs> So the only thing else is one of us will have to die. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, I feel you, because we knew a lot about one another. Mm -hmm. So now I got this deal coming up with this, this connect, like, yo, this big, this, this crazy big deal. Like, yo, they want me to put up like, I had to put up like maybe about two million. They was going to hit me with like probably about, i say anywhere from like six million dollars worth of coke in New York. Produced you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. It was like about six million dollars. So they wanted me to put up like two million dollars, and I owe four. Okay. Right? So I had like one point five. I put up like one point five, and I was just telling my little man for him to just put up a half a mil. Okay. I was able to put up the whole. I could have put up the whole two million at that time. Okay. This would have just set us on the map for, and it was at it was at like eleven thousand a key, ten thousand a key. Mm. I could have came to DC and got nine, nineteen thousand. To the dudes who I didn't really like and the dudes who I was real cool, I could have got 17, you know? Mm -hmm. That was like $6,000, $8,000 profit. So before this goes about, he, uh, his anger is really building up with me and all that. He's not really, he's not really feeling me like that no more. And we really had stopped hanging out, you know, but I didn't really pay no attention to it. I'm saying I still got love for this kid and all that. So he tells somebody down at Lawton Prison about this deal. He told somebody that he was cool with down there. Only thing he didn't know that same person that he's telling, they know my man, Wayne. Mm -hmm. My man Wayne, he get to me, he said, yo, you about to put a deal together in New York for this, 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 that, and gonna put that. I said, what the hell? I said, how you know? He said, well, man, my man called me down from law, and he said, Gary told him that, yo, that you want to put this deal together, and it ain't gonna go, you know, he gonna wind up doing you in the process. This is how much anger he built up for me. So I said, oh, yeah. So my man was like, yo, let's go. I said, no, we got to do this right now. Can't just be running up on Gary in broad daylight. That's going to come back to us. Mm -hmm. So we got to do this right, and we got to get him where nobody know. So so my, my little man Gary, he had a little beef with somebody, and, and they tried to, they just, like, maybe like a month earlier, they tried to kill him. And uh, so uh, so he beats me one night and said, yo, kid, kid, one of the kids' name was Jawbreaker out of D.C., the kid named Jawbreaker. He said, yo. Yo, I know where Joe breaking them at. This is Gary talking to us on the phone. Like, yo, I know where the kid Joe breaking them at. They had such and such, such and such. I said, oh, yeah. I, we, so I'm talking to him on the phone. I said, who you with? He said, yo, I'm by myself. I said, you, you got something? He said, yeah, I got, I, got me, uh, I got two pistols with me now. I said, all right. I was, I was with my man Wayne and, like, two other dudes that were under my man Wayne. So that was our perfect opportunity. My man Wayne was like, yo, this is it. Make it happen. Productions. So we go. We, in my, we, in, uh, we jump in this kid. MPV van, because we used to like use an MPV van because they had the little side compartments. We could throw the pistols in there if the police pull us over okay. real quick. So we jump in the MPV van, so I'm driving, because I was, since I was like the best driver, so so we go meet the kid Gary, because this is a perfect opportunity. Don't nobody know he's with us now. And, and when we come up missing, we can always be like, man, you know, I knew how to deny it quick. Okay. So we go get him. Boom. So we go get him. He gets into the MPV van. He parks his car, whatever. He parks his truck. He had the truck at the time. He parks his truck. I met him on, uh, what's that, uh, Florida Avenue. I go meet him on Florida Avenue, Florida Avenue by a, uh, a Wendy's, I think it was. Okay. We get a little revolver out mm -hmm. of the, out the stash, and I give it to the dudes that's sitting in back of my man Gary. So the man Gary, he's in the middle, but he don't know that we don't slip the revolver to the back to the kid who's going to hit him in the head. Mm -hmm. We ran for about five, ten minutes after we get the gas. Bang, my man hit him. I give the signal through the rear view mirror. My man hit him with the revolver, two in the head. All you hear is, ugh, once he hit him. Because the kid Gary was getting kind of sleepy because it was, it was about to be like, yo, we ain't going to catch these dudes. So, you know, Gary was getting kind of sleepy, so he's like dozed off for a minute. So he never even seen it or felt it coming. So the kid hit him with the revolver, bow, bow, you know, so the bullets don't go nowhere because in the revolver, they don't pop out. Okay. So he hit him in the head twice. Boom. Gary, he winds up. He, his, he winds up shitting on himself okay. from his muscles relaxing. Okay. So, you know, he's stinking up the car and all that. So that's how the thing came about that his, his dick was chopped off. So we had to find some woods. So we I had to find somewhere to dump him at. So we wind up 
we wind up taking them in this park over on 16th Street in Northwest. Okay. I don't know if it's Potomac Park. I think it's called Potomac Park. Or something. So we wind up taking them over there. And I said, yo, man, we're going to leave them in the woods. So I said, yo. So we pull over in this real dark, this real dark. I said, yo, take off his clothes, man, so they won't spot him through the clothes and all that. Take off his clothes and, and leave him naked in the woods. So we do that, and we're dragging him through the woods naked. So he gets a couple of scratches on his body and his face and on his penis because, you know, it's, we, we taking him through the book. We dragging him. Okay. So that's how it came about that they thought we chopped off his dick and all that. And I thought where we left him at was real cool, but we wound up leaving him next to uh, like a, uh, some type of telephone, some type of telephone box or something. And the next day, it just so happened that the telephone people was coming out to fix this box. Mm. And that's how they found him the next day. Uh, then they say something about dementia with your wife. Huh? Demencio. Demencio was a situation where he really disrespected himself and he disrespected other people and that's why that happened to him. Okay. Yeah. He thought he was he thought he was tougher than what he really was. But I ain't play with them Brooklyn dudes. So. You ain't play with them? Nah. Nah. I ain't I ain't they were cool. I had some cool ones that came up out of Brooklyn, but I just always remembered as a kid how Brooklyn used to like to rob you and all that. Right, right. How they was always known for for robbing you. So that that, that kinda like stuck with me in my time. But I met some I met some cool getting money dudes out of Brooklyn, without a doubt. Okay. Who hit him? My man that was down with... Wayne my, Perry? Not Wayne, but the, the kids that was up on the Wayne. Wayne didn't have... Wayne, too many people knew him as far as right there, so we, we got one of his little soldiers to hit him. But I was shaking his hand, I gave him... I told him, I said, when you see me shaking his hand, I'm not my head. You hit him right. You hit him right. You never feared that one of the bullets would slip off no. and maybe hit you? No, you know, I didn't care about that. I didn't. I was shaking his hand. It was enough where, because they walked right up on him. I mean, it wasn't no, like, from a distance. As I was shaking his hand, they walked right on him and put the gun right to his forehead and blasted him. That was in the daytime? Yeah, daytime. Boy, then after a basketball game. I just got finished playing basketball in a basketball tournament. So now, did that put the police right on you? Uh, well, they were ready on me, so that just, like, let them know. Because later on, when they finally arrested me, they was like, man, you was killing off everybody. So that just let them, that just gave them, they was already looking for me, so that was just something else that they put in their book, like, uh, another one. Didn't y'all kill someone else that was from the crew? His name was Andre. Right, whatever happened to him. Yeah, we killed him. Yeah, we killed Andre. And this guy was spending a lot of money, man. This, killed him for two reasons, actually. One is, he was messing with my man Gary's girl. Okay. And we told him to leave her alone. Okay. That was the, that was the one, that was the main reason, because he was messing with, he was messing with my man Gary's girl. We found out about it, so, being that he was dealing with me, I kind of like was able to talk to my man Gary and tell Gary like, yo, check this out, dude is spending money with me, just chill out, we're not going to do nothing to him. So I went, so... You spending good money? Huh? You spending good money? Man, the man was spending about 400000 every month with me. Hmm. Whew. About 400000 every month. At least that. He found out that I was messing with his girl. You know, he came to kind of like put it together and find out, but he never said nothing. Now. He met my man's girl somewhere, somehow, and uh, he booked her, and they was doing their thing. And the girl Caprice was kind of like, she was starting to get real unhappy with my man Gary, because he really had her on lockdown, kept her in the house with the baby and all that. She couldn't really do nothing and all that. We had bought her a convertible BM and all that, but she couldn't really drive it. When she drove it, she had to be certain places. So he really had her on lock and had her scared. So this kid Andre met her or whatever, and, you know, I guess... So we found out about it. He, my man Gary found out about it and he called me. This when we was tight like that. He called me, he was like, yo, Paul, I need to talk to you. I said, all right. So I, I met him or whatever. He was like, yo, this nigga, this nigga Tank messing with my girl. This and that, man, I'm going to step to him. He know that's my people and all that. I said, hold up, Gary, let me. And my man Gary was like, yo, that's it. He was ready to just take him out. Because mm -hmm. so he knew that that was Gary's baby mother and you, and you didn't do that. Right. So, and you know, I'm born in his, and I'm born in Andre's girl. So I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go go uh let me go talk to him first. Uh -huh. And again the get the kid the kid Andre never said nothing to me. He knew I was born again, he never said nothing to me. So and he wasn't no tough guy, nothing. He didn't you know, he was about getting a dollar. So okay. he uh I went to go talk, I said, Yo Andre, check this out. You know me and you doing business, money's good, this and that, but yo you got to stop boning Gary's girl, man. You got to stop messing with her, man, because he knows he's upset and you know, he giving the, he giving fair warning. I mean he's he's giving it he's giving he's letting this one go. Because he don't believe you had sex or whatever. And I don't even want to know. But whatever you're doing with her, let it go, man. Don't, it ain't worth it, man. And he was like, yo, I hear you good looking out, this and that. He told me this straight in my face. 
about two, three weeks past. My man Gary called me, Ken. He beat me. Yo, come see me, man. So I go meet him. Kid Andre got to die, man. Check this out. Dude doing it again, man. He's still seeing Caprice and this and that. I said, all right, man. He said, man, this time I want to talk to him. So I said, all right, no problem. So I had a deal. I had a deal with the kid Andre for about 270. Okay. To about 270,000 this day. He wanted some He wanted some drugs. So I said, yo, we killed two birds with one stone. I'm going to meet him, take care of this business with him, and you can talk to him at the same time. Okay. So, uh... So I go meet the kid. Produced by so we go meet the kid at my favorite spot over there on Minnesota and Pennsylvania Avenue over there by Amber. I goes, I told Gary, I said, just chill, man. Let me go talk to him. I have a 5.0 this day. I said, let me go talk to him, and then you come. So I got into the truck. I told the kid, Andre, I said, hey, what's up, man? I said, everything all right? He said, yeah. I said, well, what's going on, man? You, you bad? He said, nah, this and that. So my man Gary, here come my man Gary. As I'm talking to the kid, the kid Andre jumped into the back of the caravan to go, uh, to go get the money out and all that. Okay. And uh, I was over in the passenger seat. So my man Gary, he comes from out my car, which he was in the passenger seat, and comes around through the driver's side to the empty seat. So the kid Andre is coming from the back seat to the middle seat now with the bag of money. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he, the kid Andre turns around to look at me and let me know that the bag that my man Gary is coming in the car and hit him right in the head. Boom! My man Gary was strapped all the time. He knew he was going to kill him, but he knew not to tell me because I was going to tell him, no, don't do that. So now I'm like, oh, Gary, what the hell? He's like, yo, man, the hell with that dude, man. He was this and that, this is bad. I said, all right. But in my mind, I'm saying, yeah, you right. Because now, now I got the girl all to myself. So we killed two birds. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm going to miss the money, but I got, I got the girl now, too. Well, I got the 270 now. So I take the money. I said, man, what the hell? I take the money. He had a Rolex on. We left all that. We, I said, man, follow me in the car, man. Go, go. I said, here, here, take this bag, take the car, follow me. So we drove about five, six Sheds blocks away from that area. Right. And like in a residential area, a nice quiet block. Just threw him down on the floor, wiped off everything that we touched and all that, and just left him there. And they found him like two days later, three days later, because from the, from the stench of the body and all that. Because it was like summertime, so his body started stinking and they found him. Did the girl think that you did that? No, she didn't think it at first, because the same, she beat me. Soon she found out and was like, yo, they killed Andre, she cried. So, you know, I'm like, hold on, boo-boo, don't worry about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to find out who did that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going over there comforting her and telling her to calm down and this and that. And so now we got that 270, and uh, I give my man 100000 and I keep 170 And uh, I was dad on that one. I was dad on that one? Yeah, he was, he violated as far as my man telling him to stay away from his, uh, his daughter's mother. And he wouldn't listen. Yeah. How many are you actually charged with? Fourteen. Fourteen homicides? Fourteen murders, yeah. Which are they? Some of the eight in, 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 in D.C. and the rest was in New York, like some of the stick-up kids. Okay. And... So how'd they find out about the stick-up kids in New York? Well, that's what I'm seeing. But now, now my situation, now we get into that, my situation. Now, I want to take this opportunity to just... Two rumors that was always around about... And uh, make sure make sure this goes in there, Antoine. Okay. Two rumors that was always out about me. That one was I don't know if you ever that I was dying of AIDS in prison. I heard that. One. Okay. That's false. Okay. I'm 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 healthier than I ever was. Okay. And the other one, a lot of people, Poe is snitching, Poe is telling. Yes. If that's what you want to call it, then that's what you call it. But Poe calls it looking out for Poe. Okay. I'm I'm doing what I gotta do for me. And and and. And for the people that read this and read the article, oh, or, 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 the, or the once upon a time friends that I thought I had, and they look at it and say, oh, Poe went out like a sucker, or Poe went out like this. In life, in life you make choices. And sometimes those choices are good and they're bad. You follow me? I follow you. But, and I thought at the time when I, when I did what I had to do for, 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 for me, I thought... I, I definitely had to. I definitely had to, to understand that yo, what I'm doing ain't right. But that's what I needed to do for me. Right. I've truly come to accept that I made the right choice. Did at any point Rafis himself try to send anybody out? Nah. Me and him never had no problems because when he was out, he had so much of the town locked. I wasn't really a threat to him. How many different crews tried to kill you in D.C.? In D.C., I probably had about three different crews trying to come at me, and 
You know, they was coming at me, but they wasn't for real, though, because they knew who I had with me, man. They knew I had killers, man. Okay. They knew I had killers. They knew I was boss my gun, too. Do you ever feel at any time that they may get together and try to kidnap you? What, Wayne and them? Right. No. If Wayne was so loyal, why'd you flip on them, then? Government. They wasn't dealing with Alpo on a, well, we're going to give you 10 years, Mr. Martinez, or we're going to give you 15 years, or even 20 years. No. They wanted me for the death penalty. They was trying to look to give me the death penalty. Or if they couldn't succeed with the death penalty, they was going to try to give me the rest of my natural life in jail. Because we had murders. We had two murders. We had murders two blocks away from the White House. What was that about? Huh? That was about a female. That was about that, and that was a female. She wasn't really... That was about a female. But my man was so crazy that this female, when we killed this big drug dealer in D.C., that was the guy earlier I told you, the kid, Frey, Michael Frey. When we, when we took him out, it was such a big deal. That was such a big thing that this hooker started, you know, I'm not going to call a hooker, this female started running her mouth about a situation that she didn't really know nothing about. And my man got so upset at that that he just said, you know what, she got to go. She talking too much. And it was after a Keith Sweat concert. It was at this place called Constitution Hall. Constitution Hall. And that's like two blocks away from the White House. And he just left her there. He just left her there? Why, why'd you kill Michael Frey? Michael Frey was someone who was about to get back in position oh. in D.C. And he had a little he had a little cleanup list of people who he needed to eliminate for him to be back in power like that again. And I was the first one at the top of his list. Okay. To get rid of me. And how I found out about that is that he didn't know I was feeding somebody in his camp. I was looking out for somebody in his camp because he couldn't take care of him, and they got the information back to my man, and my man got it to me, and that same person that was in his camp wound up killing him Wonderful. for me. Okay. Now, uh, the murders that you're charged with in D.C., which ones are those? Um, like I said, those, uh, like I said, those, eight of them, uh, uh, we go into more detail, but eight of, them, eight of them are in New York, I mean, eight of them are in D.C., and I think two was in Maryland, and the rest was in... Uh, New York. It came out the 14 that I that I copped out to. Copped and when I say copped out to win, in my position as far as doing what I had to do for me as far as t testifying and all that, and I had to confess to those murders. I had to tell those murders. How would they get the New York murders? Well, because that's all one. You know, they New York comes to D.C. and they, they give, they... You know, the investigation, when the feds are investigating you, they're investigating everything. But how would they know all of that? From me. Oh, okay. Once you, once you take the position that I've taken, you have to tell it all. Things they didn't know I had said them because if it came a time later on that they found out about it, then whatever agreement, whatever situation that they, uh, that they gave me, they can take it Produced back and, and, and take me back to court. Okay. It was that kind of thing. Like, like, for, like for four of the murders in New York, I got immunity. Got, got immunity? Yeah, I basically, got, I basically almost got like immunity because they just added them to the murders in D.C. Okay. Now let me ask you another thing. They said also in New York that our preacher extorted you and Rich. Right. Right. Now, yeah, let's, 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 get, let's cover that real quick. Preacher never took two pennies from me. Now, that's one. Like I said, I'm here telling you that I'm, a, that I'm telling the right. so there's no reason for me to hold back anything from you. The preacher never took a, one penny from Produced Alco. by Contrast you know Productions. N never, ever. He would have took two bullets before he took any kind of money from me. Preacher, now, his situation with Rich was different. Preacher took care of some murders for Rich. No, Preacher, I was real cool with the guy that preacher killed named Terry, that was his partner. Okay. I was messing with his goddaughter named Vanessa, this girl named Vanessa, and they never came at me for any kind of extortion. One time, preacher came and asked me for like a half a key of coke, and I never even got it to him because I was so much in and out of town, I wasn't even thinking about him, no. My little man, my, my man that I told you earlier that was the stick-up kid with me and all that, he had preacher, he knew preacher, he was gonna kill preacher. Preacher never took a penny from me, even, even now, in my position, some people came to see me about Preacher, and they was asking me, like, yo, the Preacher... So I could have benefited from there if I wanted to and just said, yeah, but 
No, Preacher never took any kind of money from me. He he always thought AZ was a punk. He always used to call AZ a punk. Mm -hmm. He knew he knew what I was about. He he knew what I was about, so he didn't even come at me like that. And as far as Rich, him and Rich had an understanding because of Apple being Richard's nephew and Richard paid him like ten thousand before he came home or something to kill this kid Sean Moe. They killed him coming out of Hunt Forty Fifth Street Garage in Saint Nick. Okay. So him and him and Rich had that situation and then he was right around the corner in the Hunt Forty Eighth Street. But I don't ever, I don't ever remember Rich even giving him any money. So, and see what, and what, the, and, the, and the thing with the preacher, and so I don't care if you was talking to him. If somebody rode by you and seen you talking to the preacher, they automatically said he was getting money from you. Right. That's how that was. That's how his rep was. It was so strong like that as far as extortion. That, but if anybody that really knows me, they know I'm not paying nobody nothing. Right. It's e it's easier for me to tell him to meet me and pick up the money and just put two in his head. Come on. I could have brought, that was the case, I could have brought my man Wayne from D.C. If I didn't even want to, I could have brought him from D.C. They don't know Wayne. Wayne would have walked right up on him, hit him three times, and then piss on him. Hmm. They ain't care nothing about no damn preacher. He had, he respected me the same way I respected him. What was it like when, the, where did the feds catch you at? Uh, they called me, uh, they called me in D.C. In D.C.? Yeah. They said it was on, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue? Or yeah. Minnesota, Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania Avenue, yeah. Is no, Pen yeah, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, yeah, Minnesota and Pennsylvania, yeah. What was that experience like? Uh, that experience, that was, uh, that was, that was a scary experience for me, because, you know, I'm just the feds, I know, once they came, I knew it was over. Um, they was, uh, lamping outside this apartment, this, they was lamping outside this, this house I used to be at a lot. This, uh, this dude used to cook, it was a good, he was a faggot, mm -hmm. and, uh, his name was Manny. Manny was a good guy, he was a, he was a homo, though, he was a, he was gay. Okay. Everyone knew him in D.C., and, uh, the guy, Frey, that I talked about that we killed, mm -hmm. his girlfriend, which, her name was her, was the same girl that Rich used to mess with. This was one of the girls that Rich used to mess with named Inga. Okay. She was messing with the kid Frey now. So now after he gets killed, they don't land the feds run up in her house. Cause they had heard he got killed. So they had heard that I may have killed him because I wanted to be with her. Oh. Uh. So they ran up in her spot. So when they ran up in her spot and told her that, she was like, oh, yeah, he might have had something to do with it. Well, he don't be here. He be at Manny house all the time. Right. So what they did was they started checking out Manny's spot. And they caught me coming there a couple of times, but they didn't move in at, at that point. They wanted to make sure that it was me. So this one night, they was lamping outside the joint. I seen, I was waiting for him. In the process that I was waiting for, the kid Manny came outside. And we were sitting in his Cadillac because I was waiting for my wife to pull up. And this dude walked past the car. Black dude, it was around 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. I'm like, Damn, what the hell? What the hell he doing walking by? So I'm strapped. So I get the 9. I was carrying like two nines with me. So I, I pulled them joints out. The kid man was like, what you going to do? I said, no, I'm just, I just don't trust this dude right here. So I got my nines with me and all that. And, uh, so he disappears. My wife pulls up. She's driving a rental car. So I get in because I had took all the cars back from her. So she couldn't get to none of the cars. Mm -hmm. I had took her BMs and all that. So I get to the... I go on the passenger side of the rental, and I get in. I said, yo, go ahead, drive. I told Manny I'll see him later. I went up in, uh, I went up in the rental talking to her. I told her to drive. So as she's driving, I see a, a great Thunderbird coming back of her. You make that turn. You make that left. So the light is green now. Now she, she's moving a little something. It goes to yellow. I said, okay, now speed up and make this left. So when she made the left, she almost turned in, like, going the wrong way up the street. Okay. So I grabbed the steering wheel and jerk it back to the right lane, to where, where the traffic is going the right way. So right across the street, right across from the corner that we made the turn, there's an Amico gas station on, on Pennsylvania and Minnesota. Okay. So they got a police car in there. They knew that I wouldn't pull over for no regular car. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they sent a police car at me. And... In my mind, I wasn't driving, my wife was driving, so in my mind, I'm saying, okay, I got fake ID. I had about 10 different IDs. And my wife had her license, so I'm saying, well, you ain't really do nothing, so just pull over, and we're going to see what they're going to say. You made a mistake, and we on our merry way. But the feds was behind them all the time. The feds had said, they told me later on that we knew we couldn't just pull you over in any old kind of car, so a regular police car you may pull over for. And when I stepped out, they jumped out the trees and out the restaurant, and all kind of cars came, and this and that, but I tried to jump back in the car, and my wife tried to throw the car in drive, but she never got it in drive. She just got it down the neutral, and the car was just revving real high, 
and they snatched her out the door and pulled her through the window, and they threw me on the floor, and, and the feds was, and then one of the agents was like, "Give us that famous smile," <laughs> and I just looked up at them and gave them a smile. They was like, "Yeah, that's him." Yeah, and they had a, and when I went to the federal building, they had a can of alcohol on their table. A can of alcohol. Yeah, they there. gave they gave a can of uh, alcohol to the federal agent who finally got me. The van that they had, they had an old van sitting outside this faggot's house. And when I finally got knocked, they opened that joint up, and that joint had top of the nine technology. It had like a, a scope up in there, all type of surveillance equipment and all that. But the joint looked like a raggedy old van. So they was definitely surveilling the joint from the girl telling her that I'd be down there a lot. And uh, that's how they got me. That's how they got me that night, November 6, 1991. Over to D.C. jail and all that. I'm, I'm in D.C. jail for a little while. I'm, you know, my name, they, they starting to hear that I'm up in there. And, because the kid Rayful, he had just, maybe a, like two years before, he had just left to join. Like I said, he was like one of the biggest dudes coming up out of D.C. I'm hooking up with some of my, some of the dudes that I used to deal with on the street. They brothers are in there, so they strong. Mm-hmm. A couple of little beasts was, was, was trying to take off for the kid Michael Frey. His nephew was in there and a couple of other dudes that was rolling with him, so they was trying to, you know, like, yo, did you kill my uncle and this and that, but... Nothing, nothing ever came about that because I was, I was a little too much, I was a little too strong for them at that time. You're strong. You had a little crew in there. Yeah, I had to. Like I said, my man. Yeah. Like yeah, my yeah. man and, and brother and them, they were strong. Then my man Wayne. Okay. He, oh, he did send the word to the jail like, yo, my man is up there. Make sure he, make sure he's right. Right. So the unit they had me and dudes were like, yo, don't worry about nothing, bro. You alright? Okay. And like I said, my man, little brother, he doing like 40, 40 with the feds nine. I think he just caught another body. He was strong, so I didn't really have nothing to worry about. But then they snatched me up out of there. They took me to Virginia. Mm-hmm. They snatched me. Now it was time for me to, they was extraditing me to Virginia to the original complaint, which was... Nut. Nut. Right. Rich and them cousin. Now I'm over in Alexander Detention Center, sitting for months, just sitting, not knowing what the hell is going on. My lawyer's telling me, well, they got you for this, they got you for that. So in that, I'm thinking, okay, I, I can fight this over here. This ain't really nothing. Oh, that's, oh, that's crazy. I didn't do all this over here. No, I'm thinking... D.C. not really coming. They got me for something in Virginia. But what D.C. was doing was just building their case and was going to just add to this Virginia thing. So once I was in that system, they had people willing to come testify. Once I'm in jail, they had people willing to come testify against me. And if, and other crews before me were going to try, and they was coming back with natural life. And all. so my lawyer was like, look, you really need to make a decision. And I was trying to fight them. I was going to all the prelim- uh, preliminaries as far as far as what kind of evidence they had on me or, you know, what, what their case was. I was really taking it to the point where I'm going to see what, if I can fight these people. And uh, my lawyer was like, look, your ace in the hole is, uh, if they ever ask you to uh, tell, you really need to think about that. And that wasn't until like eight, nine, almost a year later that I decided to do that. So my lawyer came back at me and was like, look, they're trying to make a deal, man. They really want Wayne Perry. They want you, but they also want Wayne Perry. And if you got anything good on Wayne Perry, they're willing to make a deal with you. So I was like the less of two evils. Me and Wayne, we were both evil to them, but I was the less, was the less. Right, right, right. evil one. Like, we can sleep with him, but right. we can't do nothing with Wayne Perry. Right. We got to prosecute one of them, so I'd rather us prosecute Wayne Perry. But then when them crackers wanted me, they put the full court, full court press on me. We're going to hit you with the death penalty. We know we, we got you for this murder. We got you for that murder. This is the capital punishment right here. We're going to get you. That's I'm sitting up. I'm sitting up in there like, yo, what the hell am I going to do? And I'm talking to my lawyer. My lawyer like, yo, you're acing the hole is Wayne Perry because they're asking about him and this and that. And I'm saying, yo, we're not going there right now. Here's, here's 70, 80,000. We're going to, let's get magazine. this thing rolling and all that. And then they started bringing in the wife, talking about going to mess with Mama Duke and the sister and the, the niece. I said, hold, hold, hold. Let's talk. 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 What you want?